Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters Business, your source for everything business. Uh, today I have on the show Jennifer Zamudo, who is president over at Heart of Illinois United Way, and today's a very special reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I bring on a guest I had on in the past, and I like them so much I had to bring them on back. Uh, first off, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Happy to be here. Or I should say, welcome back to the show. I mean, I remember the fir- our first conversation in Heart of Illinois and all the great stuff you're doing there at United Way. Um, I don't want to assume that um, all of our new listeners got a chance to catch your first episode. So let's just start with you uh, talking a little bit more about what you're doing over at Heart of Illinois United Way. Sure, happy to. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer. Uh, here at the Heart of Illinois United Way, we believe in investing in our community measuring the needs of our community and ensuring that our donor dollars are invested in the most efficient, effective programs we can and really changing people's lives. That's amazing. And, uh, and I mean, that's a good transition right into today's, uh, into today's show topic, which is outcome driven philanthropy. Um, let's just start off with, uh, with defining that for everyone. Sure. So outcome driven philanthropy, we always talk about it like investing in the stock market, right? When we think about philanthropy, I think most people tend to think with their hearts, right? We care about animals or a certain illness or a cause that somehow resonated in our lives. And that's great. Um, we believe, though, that you should use your heart and trust data as you are investing in your community. And outcome-driven philanthropy does just that. It measures the philanthropic return on investment when you invest in a charitable cause. What is a what is a um, a philanthropic uh, return on investment? Let's go a little bit deeper on that on that thought process. Sure, and I'll give you a little bit of background too to how I came to this point because um, the job before this that I had, I was working at the Caterpillar Foundation, and before that, I had no experience in philanthropy whatsoever. And when I jumped into that role at Caterpillar, um, it was during a downturn and we didn't have a lot of funding. And I remember thinking, oh, you know, this can't be that hard. I can write checks. this should be easy. And what I very, very quickly realized just a day or two into it was that we would never have enough money to fund all the causes in front of us. And I couldn't use my feelings when making decisions because it wasn't my money. So we had to find another way to measure what we were doing to prove to our leadership that we were making good, sound investment decisions. And so that's taking the ability to say, if we're going to invest in this cause, how do we know that it was, that it did what it was supposed to do? And so for us, we can measure a variety of different things. But the one that tends to kind of rise to the top is thinking about outcomes. And I think many times we think about you know, after-school programs, let's just say, where, you know, you know that they served 100 kids. Wasn't that great? Um, you know, they, they stayed out of trouble and you gave them an after-school snack. But if we really take the outcome model and move to an out, sorry, an output model and move to an outcome model, outcome is a change in knowledge or behavior. How do you measure a change in knowledge or a change in behavior? Well, we, we help the kids study, um, and they've got their grades up, and we can measure that change in their knowledge. That helps us say, okay, this was a good investment, or we could have made a stronger investment because we can see what the outcomes were at the end of the day. That's awesome. And so what, um, what kind of feedback have you gotten from your, um, from your donors or, or um, on taking this approach? Because it sounds amazing. And it, to me, it sounds kind of like, like obvious, like it's, it's one of the things that you should look at doing when, when considering where to, um, where, to, where to allocate your dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. You know, I think change is hard for people, no matter what it is, me included. And anytime we mm-hmm. do things differently, it requires helping people understand the what behind it and the why behind it. And we always, you know, one of the things I think is this is not this is not your grandmother's charity work. You know, I think when mm-hmm. we think about the way it used to be, you know, it'd be some nice ladies and they'd go out in the community and they cared <laughs> and they wanted to help. And that's that's still really, really important. And, and let, let me not, uh, I would be... Uh, mistaken if I did not say those women and men that were involved in doing the work for all those years did incredible, an incredible job. Absolutely. But as times have changed, um, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to just use your feelings or your heart when making those decisions. And, and we at the Heart of Illinois United Way always say, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. Um, and I think that's a good way of, of thinking about this work. It required uh, some significant change management, both with our, our donees, so the, the, the organizations receiving the funds in terms of what we as a donor expect from them, and then also for the people who are donors to our organization, 
to let them know what's happening with their money, um, that was a little bit easier. I think, you know, for, for the charities, the nonprofits, before everyone had moved to this model, when we started asking for data, it was a shock for them. And it mm-hmm. changed the way that they were set up. They needed people on their teams that had the job of measuring the work. And that was really an important change all around. What kind of uh, measurements are important to you in, in, in this model? So there are, I won't get into all the detail on all of it, but for us, for example, at at the Heart of Illinois United Way, we look at a variety of different things, and we have volunteers that help us do this. So our volunteers, our grant reviewers, they review a grant application from our our programs. We look at those Mm -hmm. programs to see are they doing what they should do, are they serving the people they should serve, the outcomes they should have. We also, though, look at, there's there's an art and a science to this, right? If it was all black and white and it was just dropping in a bunch of data, we could have the computer making the decision mm-hmm. using an algorithm to say what we should invest in. But there are other things, too. We can't just use data when we make the decision. So we've got the grant reviewer score. Then we also look at a, a continuous improvement process score, which means we all have things we're working on. Every program isn't perfect. How are we continuing to grow and improve every day? And that helps us kind of understand where the gaps are and how we can help them grow. Uh, part of this process is helping them continue to achieve the goals that they set for themselves. We also audit the overall financial health of the nonprofit as a whole. We have a great um, system that one of our wonderful volunteers put in place for us. We drop in data from the organization's 990. And while this is only about 10% of the total score when we're scoring a program, so if you think about it, there's an agency, a nonprofit mm-hmm. as a whole, and they have a variety of different programs underneath. They're not all exactly the same. So the financial audit score just helps us understand the financial health of the organization as a whole, and then that tells us how much risk we're taking. If you think about this like investing in the stock market, sometimes you take a little more risk because it's worth it in the long run. Sometimes you want a little less risk. And that score just helps us understand, all right, if this organization isn't entirely financially healthy, it helps us understand how much risk we're taking um, in terms of the investment. And then we also look at how much our agencies are participating with us, are they supporting the community as a whole, because collaboration is a really important part of this as well. I don't think any agency or program can live on its own, including us at the heart of Illinois United Way. Collaboration, I believe, is one of the future ways that philanthropy is going to grow. Any um, interesting uh, projects or goals or things you're working on uh, for 2020 that you care to announce? Well, there is one project that we're working on, and it's not just the Heart of Illinois United Way, but our community collectively here in central Illinois is looking at workforce readiness. And we've realized that in order for our um, Economic Development Council to bring new businesses in, we have to have at least 60% of the people in our community, and this is a national standard, uh, certified past high school. So that means any kind of certification that does not have to be a two or four year degree, but any kind of certification past high school helps your community be successful. So our community college, our chamber, our EDC, our not for profit community and the businesses are coming together to ensure we are educating people around jobs where we have lots of gaps like nursing that have great paying opportunities to help folks that are probably working really hard today, maybe two or three jobs, just cannot seem to make ends meet, and to help young students, too, understand the possibilities that are ahead of them. And I think that this is a great collaboration model. It's also addressing some really important needs in our community, not just from a nonprofit side, but from a business side. And I think to tie this all up, really what that means is that this is an economic story that we're telling, not just around workforce readiness, but when we can invest in our communities charitably, and we can do it using collaboration, our entire communities economy is going to grow, and when that happens, we all benefit. Fantastic. Um, Well, hey, Jennifer, uh, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on uh, Heart of Illinois United Way, um, what's what's the best way for them to reach out and get that info? Um, Our website is hoiunitedway.org, and that has a list of all of our social media as well. That's the best place to get started, and I'm always happy to connect with other folks as well. I love uh, sharing these stories and making this work uh, as efficient and effective as we can. Fantastic. Well, hey, Jennifer, really appreciate you uh, coming back on the show and uh, sharing more about what you're doing over at Heart in Illinois and uh, and also had given us an education of philanthropy and some different um, out, uh, views on looking at it. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. 
Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave us a review. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, um, make sure you hit the subscribe button there and uh, and leave us some comments on the video. Love to keep the conversation going. Don't let it stop here. Let us know your thoughts on philanthropy. And uh, Jennifer, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been awesome having you back. 